Just three days after Christmas in 1992, John Brickey and his wife Carrie were hosting a family gathering at their home in Eatonville, Washington, to celebrate the holiday a little late. John had surprised his father, John Sr., with a very special gift. All right, guys, let's, let's go about now. What he had given me was a hat. <laughs> and uh, there were keys in the hat. And out in his garage that was shut was a pickup. And it was mine. Bring it on up. The transmission leaked in it. And it was leaking real bad. That pretty close there? Okay, bring it on up, okay? John was planning to fix the truck before his father drove it home. That looks pretty good. Right. Johnny's mechanic. He'd been a mechanic for about eight years. Yeah, it's high enough now. Let's see if I can. I should be able to get to the linkage here. The emergency brake was on, it was in park, and nobody thought to block it or anything. There's the linkage here. I'll get situated around here and we'll see what else we need to get this thing fixed and all ready to go on it. There we go. Pry this loose, maybe we can take this thing out and get this linkage off of here. We can get it going better. Oh, yeah, I should be able to get that. I got to just step back from the pickup. And it does seem like I heard a click. I could see that it was smashing. Johnny, I couldn't find a, a pulse, and I couldn't find any breath. I just lost it. John's wife, Carrie, was inside with his mother and younger sister. And he's like, John's stuck. And I was like, he's stuck? Well, OK. I was thinking he was stuck. his foot was stuck. Let's go. Let's go see what's going on. And I just saw his feet were hanging out from under the truck. It was not a natural position for any human being. I was sure he had broken his back, and I was like, oh, my God, he's never going to walk again if he lives through this. Fire and medical aid. Um, yes, we have a medical emergency, a truck hold on top of my husband. Okay, is he still under the truck? Under the truck. He's stuck underneath it. It was up on jacks and the jacks. Okay, what part of him is stuck underneath of it? Uh, his back. He's Lakewood Fire Dispatcher Patty Himesness took the call. She sounded real calm. And I didn't think it was a great big emergency because she was so calm. Okay, my partner's going to start help now. I'm going to stay on the line until we find out if he's conscious and breathing. Okay. No, he's not conscious. Okay, I need to know if he's breathing. Find out if he's breathing, please. 1544 ALS. Man trapped under vehicle. Security, you stay on the line. I can go out until he's breathing. Okay. I knew that going schizo on him and just breaking down wasn't going to help John at this point. You can do it. You can do it. I had to be strong enough to get the things done that had to be done to make sure we were giving John every possible chance he had. I felt guilty as hell. Harry he went and bought this pickup for me. My pickup. I thought, why did I... Why did this happen? Hey, take a couple of real deep breaths for me, okay? You're doing good, and my partner's got help on the way already. He's not breathing. He's not breathing. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. When they said he didn't have a pulse and he wasn't breathing, I knew then that he technically he was dead. I mean, that's my big brother out there. And no heartbeat, not breathing. Pierce County Volunteer Firefighter Captain John Christian was paged from his home just up the street. Put my fingers right on his neck, and there was nothing. I kept feeling around. I thought, well, maybe I missed it. And there was nothing there. Then I got a little nervous, because there he was. There he was. You can't, you know, there's nothing I can do. We have help coming. Okay. okay. We don't want you to get hurt too, okay? Somebody... I don't care how much adrenaline you got. It's hard to move a four or five thousand pound truck by hand. It was everything flashed in front of me that, no, this isn't good. This isn't happening. Johnny shouldn't be underneath this pickup because he knows he should have had it blocked and he didn't have it blocked. Within three minutes of the call, rescue units arrived with the jaws of life. When rescuers finally freed John, he'd been pinned under the pickup for more than six minutes. Oh, Paul. Oh, Paul. 
don't have any respirations either. I remember looking at his face, and it was just completely purple. And looking at him, knowing this is not my husband, and he's dead. And that, gosh, I've never, we haven't had kids, and so I can't tell a kid about how needy he was. No one's going to know that. We know it downtown. Battalion Chief Larry Spawn was among those treating John. Clear. Let's check him. I don't got any check pulse. Basically, this this person is dead. They're not breathing, and no. their heart's not beating, so they're clinically dead. I'm thinking that I have to turn around and tell the family that, you know, it, it doesn't look real good here. Um, that's scary to me. At one point, I thought, if he's going to be in severe pain forever, if he wakes up, don't make him wake up. Okay. Knowing Stay that back. he wouldn't, he wouldn't love life. I don't got anything. Check your pulse. No pulse. I knew, just looking at this person that was dead, that that he should stay that way rather than have people take care of him for the rest of his life because he would be miserable, even though he would he'd try to fake it maybe. But I knew that I, he and I would both know that he was miserable because he would share that with me. Okay, we're doing good there. Keep okay. going. If we're down to 20, we need to keep doing some press. Uh, I think I feel a heart. One more time. I've got a pulse. Pulse? On, I think I've got a pulse. What do you got? Clear. Clear. We got some. We got a heart. Back. Back. One more time. One more time. It seemed like they had just started CPR to me when he said, huh, I got a pulse. Like he didn't believe in himself. 24-year-old John Brickey was admitted to Madigan Army Medical Center in a deep coma. Stable right now. I started going through things like, is he going to remember us? Because I knew that the, he had not had blood circulating through his body, so I didn't know if he was going to have brain damage. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Well, you're looking better than earlier. I was just talking to him because. I heard somewhere where if you talk to people and encourage them, it helps them get better faster. I'll keep you okay. I'm taking care of you. Hang in there, John. And I noticed the monitor. Every time I would talk to him, his his heart rate would go up. Let go now. I'm wearing your wedding ring. Come down. I just started crying. I was like, gosh, he knows who I am when I'm talking to him, even though he can't talk to me. Within three days, John came out of the coma to the amazement of his doctor, Lawrence Levine. He woke up almost like throwing a switch. There did not appear to be any obvious spinal cord damage, any obvious brain damage. It's as if he went to sleep for a prolonged period of time and woke up and says, hello, I'm here, I'm back. <laughs> More than a year has passed since the incident. There's no brain damage at all. It's really, really amazing. The only thing that he doesn't remember that day, but that's the day I just didn't forget too. Uh, I didn't chalk the wheels, which, being a mechanic and that, I should have known better. I learned that it, the little things can really cost you if you're not, if you're not cautious. John's a mechanic. He knows what he's doing. He screwed up. My brother called him Squash. He was just like, can I talk to Squash? I mean, it's just awful. It was really bad jokes came out of this. Which, for a while, I didn't find any humor in. But <laughs> now I look back and it was kind of funny. What are you saying, Squash? Hi, Kevin. Hi, Squash. Hi, how are you guys doing? Let's stop the meeting for a minute. We had the association meeting. John was here. And he thanked the volunteers for... for doing what they had done. Okay. Choked a few of us up. How are you doing? Good. Larry, how are you? We get cards and letters from, from family members all the time. But this was different. This, this was the actual patient who wanted to express his gratification uh, to, for what we had done. John subsequently joined the Pierce County Volunteer Rescue Squad. <laughs> he wants to do things for other people. And... He isn't so self-centered that he's got to have everything for him. He's just one of my special kids. You know, he's special. It'd be awful hard to do without him.
How are you doing? Good pizza? Yeah. All right. <laughs>